Hey, you see my... Ah, it's too bright. <laughs> you know that's being left in, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> First of all, how about you tell everyone where we are today? Look around, guys. Can you guess? Probably not. Uh, unless you saw a license plate. We are in Hong Kong. That's correct, we're in Hong Kong. And we're just chilling out for the day, gotta get some things done, which you can't get done in mainland China. Right. And that gave, this, gave us this idea, and the idea is, what are the five crazy things that you can only do in mainland China that you just can't do anywhere else? That sounds like a great idea. We felt alive, I remember you. You make me stronger, can go without end much longer. Yeah. Great topic. What's number five? I'd say number five would be the fact that you almost always get to drink for free in nightclubs. Very, Maybe you can explain true. why and how this happens, how this comes about. Well, before you guys get all excited, you, you failed to mention drink for free with fake booze. Because <laughs> most of the time, it's yeah, yeah. fake booze. I, I'll be honest, it is. Most nightclubs serve fake booze in China, at least what I know. Uh, anyway, yeah, so basically, if you go to the nightclubs here, a lot of the rich Chinese guys, some of them quite unsavory at times, mm -hmm. uh, would like to show off to their friends. Correct, correct. And they would like to invite the white guy to their table yeah. and buy them drinks. Because they have so much money, they don't have to deal with it, right? So it's very common for them to just blow thousands of RMB at the club. And uh, you can benefit from that. You can get drinks all night long because people want to show off. And you might, some people might be thinking, <clears throat> oh, no, no, that's not true. But it is true. <laughs> of it's course it's true. To me almost every time I've been to a nightclub, I right. get called over, you know, I'll be dancing. I don't do that anymore. No, neither do but I. But back when I was going to clubs, you know, I'd just be milling around even, and then you'll get some drunk guy will come up and like, hey, foreigner, you know, and take it to their table and drink. But then it's not only me. It's happened to every other foreigner that I know. Sure. Without fail. Particularly if you're white. Yeah, I mean, okay, I should change Maybe that. if you're black too, because they'll be like, NBA, NBA. That's literally what they'll say. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I'm not lying. No, you're not. <laughs> but it, it is absolutely true. Being a foreigner in a nightclub in China, in mainland China, especially in a smaller city, mm. you're guaranteed to get invited over for free drinks so you can drink for free. So that's number five. Sorry. I don't think I've ever paid for a drink in a nightclub yeah. in China. Number four, become a minor celebrity overnight and get famous over pretty much nothing. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay, let's just talk about ourselves first. Um, <laughs> sure, I love that. <laughs> I've been on Chinese TV, I've been in a soap opera, mm -hmm. I've been in Chinese adverts, mm -hmm. I've been on billboards, right. I've been in flyers, mm -hmm. sure. magazines, right. newspapers, right. you name it. How about you? Uh, all of those things, except for the soap opera. Yeah. I was only on TV for the, uh, for the news, but yeah, uh, and some, com some little commercials and stuff, obviously. And I'm not a person that should be famous. <laughs> I mean, at least yeah. not back then. I wasn't no, doing sure. anything, I wasn't in the entertainment arts. I was just white. Well, you know, it's kind of strange. You'll see that some foreigners become famous. And when we say famous, we mean China famous. Yeah, you yeah, will for see sure. on the Chinese internet, the Chinese social media, they'll blow up. And it's always something like foreigners that, I don't know, eat Chinese food. And they're like, sure. mm, wow, mm, mm, this is delicious, <laughs> right? And then they get, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or it'll be, yeah, you know, a foreigner that says, like, can sing a Chinese patriotic song very right. well. Yeah, no. You know, so it's not the traditional famous type of person. No, that we think no, of. no, no, no. You don't need to be good looking. No. In fact, I think it goes against you, to be honest. Does it? Well, mostly, sometimes, sometimes, mostly. yeah. Not always, but mostly. So you don't actually, you don't need to be good looking. You don't need to be well spoken. All you need to do is either be some, some sort of a funny comedic guy. Right. Self-deprecating. Right. It's got to be self-deprecating. Or you have to love something Chinese. Right. So you That's, have to be like fully into China in some way and then you will become Those famous. are the prerequisites. You have to be a shill basically. Yeah. I, I, you, I think you literally said the most important point is like eating shit. Yeah. I've noticed that like people act, it goes to their head. They'll get like a million views or something on Chinese media, right? Yeah. And they're literally just eating like a spicy dumpling or some bullshit. Sure. And they're like, oh man, I'm going to make this career out of this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, eating. But eating Chinese food. That aside, if you're part of any sort of WeChat groups or anything, you'll notice that there are constantly people asking for like middle-aged white guy or yeah. I'm looking for a, an Indian, you know, child or something. Because <laughs> seriously, I know, <laughs> I know. Bad. 
I know, it's but just so true. It's, it's a big industry here in China. Right. They will hire foreigners to be in adverts. For instance, I know an old, an old guy that uh, you know, used to teach kindergarten and he would appear in commercials as like a, as like a foreign doctor, you know, like a professor right. or whatever. And he would be selling like medicine, like fake, fake enlargement, right. post enlargement pills and stuff. And be like, this foreign doctor. And this is like, douchebag. This is good. This is douchebag in Huizhou is doing the exact same thing. All right. I mean, this guy, like, I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing. So some on the street. Yeah. But he, you should be ashamed of yourself, dude. <laughs> like, you're actually promoting a hospital that's probably completely underqualified. And you're posing as a doctor. Yeah, you're going good. to hell. <laughs> anyway, so Swiss douche. <laughs> oh, he's Swiss. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, so basically, what happens here is, if you're a foreigner, you will very easily get modeling jobs and be on commercials and stuff. It's just part of it. So yeah, that's our number four. That's yeah. a four number four crazy thing that'll happen to you in China. Mainland China. What the hell? These birds are loving this rice. Rice birds. Oh, they all went away. Yeah, they don't like to be on camera. They're camera shy. Camera shy birds. Number three is you could be forced to take a urine sample in an iClub. Yes. Or bar. You make it sound like it might be this like rare occasion, but recently it's been happening so often. And, you know, over the years I've been in China, in Shenzhen specifically, it seems to happen once. Every couple of years they'll have some or other big, you know, government meeting or there'll mm. be something happening in the city. And one of the things they do in order to, I guess, impress the higher-ups is they'll have like a, a big crackdown on sort of all the foreign bars. I was going to say, they never ever go to the Chinese clubs. And in, in uh, Guangdong, where we, uh, we live, yeah. drug use amongst Chinese people in KTVs and clubs is very high. Mm. There's tons of ketamine and cocaine and stuff like that, and meth yeah. going around. And I would say probably more so I've seen it in Chinese clubs, not foreign frequented clubs. Yeah, sure. Marijuana is definitely more common in you know, a foreign place or whatever, but basically they'll, they'll round you up yeah. and they will lock the doors, the police go in with their guns yeah. and they make you pee. Yeah, or that time they rounded up like 400 foreigners and put them on buses and took them down to the stations to get right. them tested in Shenzhen. It happens and it's basically got to do with face. We've talked about this before, Right. but all it is is they want to be able to show their superiors that, look, we're doing something, you know, we're cleaning up the streets type thing. Sure, sure. And uh, the big difference is that unlike... This way? Yeah, down there. Unlike in the West, the police here do not need a warrant. They do not need your permission. No, no. They want to take a urine sample from you. They've got every right to do so. And right. you can't stop them. And in fact, they'll stand there and, and watch you and wait for you to take that sample. So. And here or in Hong Kong, say, give the sample. You're not taking. Yeah. <laughs> here in Hong Kong, test. here in Hong Kong, you don't, you can't be searched without a warrant. No. So that's very different. Yeah, it's different. So that's definitely a mainland China only thing. Number two is being kept awake late at night by vicious gangs of old ladies. <laughs> what do I mean? Well, you're talking about the Guangchang Wu. Of course. Basically, you've got these gangs of old middle-aged to old ladies, mm -hmm. and what they do is they dance. Right. This might sound very harmless but no <laughs> no man they you, get together in whew. gangs have you seen the red suns in Huizhou man yeah, this yeah. Is, ladies are vicious and what they do is they normally have like a portable jukebox or sort yeah. of boombox thing which is really loud very loud and very tinny yeah it's tinny and treble it's all about volume not right. about bass <laughs> it's not all about that bass no <laughs> treble <laughs> <laughs> anyway so what they do is they set up in the in the squares any kind of open area really it can be a park it can be anywhere but usually it's like right underneath your window. Right. And uh, they start dancing with this really loud music and they can go on way past midnight. Way past midnight. I don't know how they have it in them. I thought they went to bed earlier than we do. Yeah, I think it's the, the one thing they look forward to all day. Sure. So that's what they do. But it got so bad that there was this case. Where was it? Was it in Beijing or we'll find out where it was. But the residents of an apartment building got so pissed off with these ladies that they went and bought like crowd suppression <laughs> level they spent like basically a million dollars on this crowd suppression speakers to blast down at these ladies like shut up stop dancing um it, that's how bad it got and finally wow. they like they brokered a deal mm. where the the gangs of ladies said that they would stop at a certain time right if they just took down those massive massive speakers it's so. funny too because they they also you say gangs but they're not one gang right yeah a lot of the gangs in the small city that i live in huizhou yeah. they'll actually compete for territory so oh, like they, I, they encroach in on 
like I said, the Red Suns are the biggest ones, right? Yeah. They have their own uniform and shit. Yep. When other people go in to do tango dancing and stuff and waltz and all that kind of stuff, they're like, get the f out of here. Yeah, they'll go and they'll like break their, <laughs> right. break their boom box and like, <laughs> right. what are you doing on our turf type thing? It's kind of funny. It is. Number one is you can get spied on and harassed by evil uncles. Very special Chinese characteristic. <laughs> and something that you might not uh, kind of run into unless you're filming. Yeah. But if you're vlogging or you have a camera out, you will be spied on by evil uncles. What is an evil uncle? An evil uncle is usually a sort of, I'd say, once again, sort of middle-aged to older gentleman, right? Mm. Sort of the kind of guy who grew up in the Red Guard era, probably was a Red Guard himself. Right. Um, for those of you who don't know what a Red Guard is, just look it up. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and what they do is if they see a foreigner with a camera, they're immediately suspicious because they were brought up, I guess, during there were no foreigners era. back then, right? Not only that, they were actually told to report yes. any foreigners if they saw them ever. Right. So they've still got that in them. Right. And I get it all the time. If right. I'm walking with a camera, they will follow me. Right. They will stare at me. They We've will, been there, man. They will call the local police or security guards to come and check me out. Right. And it's and usually kind of told to stop filming. Yeah. And uh, it, it happened a while ago that I just, you know, Shenzhen is a... Is, it's kind of a melting pot. Everybody comes from all over the place. Here, right? right. And it's it's a young city. It's an open city. I was filming out in some area, and this guy just wouldn't leave me alone. Just following me non-stop everywhere I went. Mm -hmm. And I eventually just went up to him and I was like, "Hey, man, what's what's the story?" And after I'd explained to him what I was doing, I just said, "Oh, it's just my hobby. I'm just filming something for my friends." Then he was like, "Oh, okay." And it turns out he was from. He just arrived in Shenzhen. He was from like some inner city. So he still had the very sort of, um, you know, old mindset. Right. He wasn't used to seeing foreigners. And because I was walking around in like an urban village type area, he was very suspicious. So it gets really annoying. It, it's, it's terrible because they look at you with disgust and suspicion and they follow you everywhere. And I'm telling you, it's just not pleasant. It's like if somebody was literally coming up and they'll stare in the camera. I got, yeah, it I also got tons leads, of footage. It so. leads you to getting in trouble too. I yeah. mean, oftentimes most people leave you alone, but if an evil uncle comes up, yeah. And then alerts the security guards and the cops and oftentimes you're shut down. Yeah, and it it's sucks. annoying, especially if you're doing something exactly the same as like a local person next to you. Right, on like their cell phone or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're taking pictures of something and you're taking pictures of the same thing, but then they'll call the security guards on you, not on the others. So. True. I mean, that's just number one is something you want to avoid, probably. Oh, Evil yeah. uncles. Stay away Evil from uncles, them. Evil uncles, yeah. And milk dogs. I mean, they definitely don't run into anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing that's crazy about China, the milk dogs. But, you know, that's a story you, for another day. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and you'd have to come here to, to figure that one out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it. Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to tell our subscribers before we sign off so whether or not you like to get your liver completely poisoned and you know have to wait in a long line for a transplant because you had too much free fake booze at the chinese club or you like to sip on a nice chinese tea and sit in your living room with a quiet book uh, i implore you to like the video if you did and subscribe if you haven't and leave a comment down below what do you think is the craziest thing about china well yeah uh, for me the craziest thing about china is just china itself <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I gotta say also, uh, doesn't matter if you're an evil aunt or an evil uncle, we hate you all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Until next time guys, you know the drill. Unless you're an evil aunt or an evil uncle, stay awesome. <laughs>